Turner. Rodriguez. Case D five two one five two seven. Turner Rodriguez Casillas. 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 Counsel, your appearances and bar numbers. Good morning, Your Honor. Jack Flynn, bar number one zero five eight four. On behalf of my attorney, Joseph Brother. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Barbara Kyle, bar number eighty five twenty eight. Appearing on behalf of the defendant, Ingrid Rodriguez. She's you retained also. I am not. I'm unbundled. I'm not appearing for Jennifer. Isla. That's what I'm saying. Like you work for Jennifer, so you're just covering I'm not, for her today. I'm just covering for her today. She contacted me last night, so. Okay. I might the be a bit off on not quite parties can be seated. I read everything on the motion, the opposition, counter motion, reply, everything's exhibits, everything that's been filed. What we have is a child, Mariella. Mariella, she is three years old, is that correct? We've got dad's correct. FDF. I don't know if mom had already filed hers by now. But it's a joint legal primary to mom, it was the, the last custodial order. Dad has set visitation, 250 a month child support and they were supposed to work something out with the DA. She wants to relocate to Hollywood, Florida, and Dad has a, um, what's the status of his criminal case? It's still ongoing, preliminary hearing, I think? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah, prelim is like coming up soon. Yeah, the 24th, I believe. Right, and until, uh, in the meantime, while we monitor that case and we get the disposition and the outcome of that case, the question is what do we do in the interim? Right now, did they go before TPO judge as well? Yes, they did. Judge. And they did they ordered supervised visit at Donna's house? No, Your Honor. They ordered did supervised by a paternal grandmother. By grandfather. Yeah, grandma's here. Okay. The... I don't know if that's going to be an issue today, but um, I've read everything in the paperwork, obviously, and he's still got to have this criminal case resolved mm -hmm. until I know the disposition. I usually wait on that, but in the interim. Is the current situation conducive for the child or uh, uh, any changes? Because obviously right now you've got the very temporary, temporary orders from the TPO judge. And the TPO judge, obviously, he, he did he agree to this extend or were? It was were, extended for a year. By stipulation, correct? I don't know. Yeah, he or, wasn't allowed to talk at the hearing, so he didn't stipulate. Uh, he appeared at the hearing. Did he bring an attorney? No, nope, he did not. I believe it was just extended because there was the arrest, uh, or they were pending. He arrest. didn't so have he an attorney to advise him, yeah. so it's a, and there was no pending D case. But it's gonna it's gonna dissolve automatically next month, I think. So I don't February think TPO is even an issue. They only did it for up to that time, or it's yeah, been it's a year. year. It's, it's been a year. February twelfth. Because of the February twenty eighteen incident. Correct. Okay, and I'm just hearing this is like a year now. <laughs> right. Okay, so what's happened in the in the year? Basically, are there any new incidents that prompted her to file this motion? Why did she wait a year? Well, normally they file like the same week. Generally, yes. And yeah. My client would have done that. My, my client really can't afford to do this. Something must have happened that prompted her to file back in November. Well, some of the things that came up just recently or that have been happening ongoing is that my client is being followed. So friends of plaintiff have been harassing her, intimidating her. She's very concerned. She Other has, than he said, she said, do you have any proof like cell phone videos of actually um, being stalked or? What there is is uh, one of her neighbors did actually see it and heard a friend on the phone saying, yes, she's here. I see the lights on. The friend actually filed a report and did actually uh, sign a statement that's with the police. Mm -hmm. And I would have included that in the pleadings, but I didn't draft these pleadings. So that would be like maybe a trial issue. So that definitely was there. Were you um, saying you have this friend? What's the, our neighbor? What's the neighbor's name? Potential witness at trial? Because this thing's going to trial. Because she's doing a relocation request. Your Honor, I'd ask you to deny trial because if you read through the pleading, there's zero in support of a relocation. She didn't go through best. Um, you know, factors. I actually read that also. And you know, there were inconsistency in reports in the police reports, and you're going to bring the police officers. If it were to go to trial, you'd bring the police officers. Right. And here's the thing, not that people wish for trials, but if it has to do with, you know, me sitting in the middle and we have a he said, she said, and if I give the benefit of the doubt and give the trial, and if somebody's credibility, obviously, on either side is just so, once just so incredible, I guess would be the word, I mean, there's just going to be hefty attorney's fees and sanctions and 
your rule 11 and your and all that we're going down that road and she's she's dead set on moving to hollywood florida but they want me to summarily uh, summarily rule today and say not even close correct your honor i mean well here's the thing she has primary so she's can she has primary right correct. so she can make the request under the schwartz correct. and other standards correct. um and it's not like a joint physical requirement but um, what sh why do you believe that <laughs> see now you're you're arguing she shouldn't even have to have the right to relocate because of the frustration right of wants. his contact right. and visitation and withholding of the child right she that's right what you're saying Correct. and if you but wouldn't you need a trial to, to prove that by clear and convincing evidence it's not our burden been? as the movement to prove that it's their burden to prove under the factors under the statute she didn't show an actual advantage. All that she's showing is that she wants to move. She, she says, I have family and friends. She's given two reasons exactly. I've read the motion. You're saying their motion's deficient on that request. Deficient. There's, well, there's that no could best be a basis interest. denying them. They'll just refile and give and them that's something fine. more details. She can file and give details. That's fine. She hasn't given yeah. any. Yeah. On the same token, technically, you're right and I'm right because the abduction stuff has to be proven by clear and convincing evidence or withholding frustration of visitation. Right. It's one of the factors. Under best interest of right. the child because factors. Because we move for joint physical as well. But in the meantime, um, he's been on the supervised visitation for like a year. Yes, yeah, sure. And there was no pending D case, and he just sort of let it. He was fine with that because grandparents are visit or he lives well, he's with he's his parents. He's not fine with it. You know why he's fine with the TPO? Because there's no contact, and that's really what he wants is no his, contact. And his case her. has been pending, and he wants to wait and see what happens to his right. case. So there's been, much, not much he can do. Right, until that's resolved, and we think right. it's going to be resolved very quickly. Right. right there are other things that weren't brought up in the pleadings. One of the things that I think is really important we shouldn't talk about is it. that the, my client... I know your objection, but I'll hear it and see what it's about. My, my client went to see the doctor, and it may have been mentioned, but not really fleshed out. Is this um, new stuff? She did go to the ER. She went to the doctor. She has spine problems. She is constantly seeing the doctor still from the injuries that she sustained. She's actually getting injections every other day. I kind of mentioned that in your motion Correct. about the did neck and the head injuries. The ER, so medical records would be at issue? Medical records are at issue. There are substantial medical records. Those are also going to be uh, in the felony case. The DA has subpoenaed all the medical records. So technically, he can't say anything until the criminal case is resolved. She will be testifying yes. against him in the criminal case. Correct. And that trial is not even close yet. They're going to do a preliminary, and then by summertime, they'll set it down for trial, and a lot of these things get continued sometimes due to discovery issues and all that, but it's not uncommon for criminal case trials to get continued. Unless they set it, they set it as a firm date you're looking at about summertime right. here's, here's what and I'm he's talking. seeing but he, but he gets to see the children like every weekend the child he, as long as he lives with the grandparents well, as long as it's supervised yes his but parents yes here's the thing they filed a motion yeah there's all these medical records she she told the, the doctors or the, she told the da that she had broken her neck and that she keep broke her back they didn't produce one picture they didn't produce one medical record mm -hmm. she should have all these things she has nothing mm -hmm. The wow. DA is, the judge in the criminal case has said, she, she said, I have a video of him choking. Well, the DA hasn't withdrawn the complaint. They, By the time they get to preliminary hearing, Hopefully they, they will might. on the 24th, and I, I hope we can come back So soon. why don't I status check you guys after the 24th prelim sure. hearing and just see where it's at, have a quick sure. hearing on that. In the meantime, I wouldn't see no changes to supervise visitation until his criminal case is resolved. Okay. Yeah. So status check in. Yeah, what well, can I bring you in? And it would be, well, Miss Isto has to make herself available, obviously. You're just covering for today. Correct. I want to see what happens in the preliminary. You know, there's a... Yeah, I mean, it's in two days. The reason why I want to status check, and I'm going to make a record, is preliminary. Obviously, he's bringing a lawyer. Of, uh, does he have his own lawyer he's hiring for the criminal? Yeah, he has a criminal. They're going to talk with the DA, and I don't know if they're going to... The DA is going to say, maybe we'll withdraw the complaint, or no, we might have enough to go forward and um, take it from there, take it from there. Okay, I'll just do a quick quick checkup on that one. You say it's, it's just, it's this week, isn't it? Yeah, it's two days from now. Well, I'm going to bring you back next week. Do you have any room next week, starting the 28th? January 28th at 9.30 a.m.
Um, yeah, we got room there. 9.30? Yeah, slot opened up there. 9.30 a week from to, from Monday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, a week from yesterday. Thank you. Why don't we just check up on you guys there? I don't know. You know, they'll be asking for a dismissal of the complaint or the DA will speak with mom or they'll say mom will produce whatever evidence she can sure anticipate and then they'll say nope we're still going to go forward we don't know well we'll find out and the preliminary is also see if it's going to be bound over as a felony to trust justice court and then if they set the hearing those are like mini trial type things so we'll see what happens there either negotiations or they will hold that hearing and then they will either leave it in justice court or be bound over to district court I'll see you guys in a week. All right, All right thank you, you counsel. Thank status you. quo, status quo with dad supervised with paternal grandparents. Okay. Check it in a week. Check